ready. Wow, what's up? It's Man and Fresh. New York City, Dave Warehouse. It's going down. Skate boys and bad bros, right? And all of them. That's real time. Cat Daddy Slim just entered the building. He's the what, what, partner right here. I'm all bad at you, dude. I was rushing trying to get over here. You know, I had to pat myself off, you know. Yeah. You keep going to thing. I got a, my main question. I want to hear that, ladies and gentlemen, one time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the famous ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was just that coming and over here. Oh, that that's first, That young boy track. And that right there, when you did that, yeah, because I was a little shorty then. I was like, I was like, man, I was like, that voice is on, you know? Dude, you know, I, and all that is like, you know, straight off the head. Like, it's unrehearsed. You know, it just comes out like that. And I don't even believe in that. I believe in, like, the way I feel. That's the way I'm going to say it. And I'm not going to be apologetic for it. Like, it's a lot of music right now. Like, kids really not being true to their soul because they like, oh, I got to think this out. And I'm like, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you got to say the shit that counts. That's right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What's some of your biggest inspiration to start off? Ooh, man, my biggest inspiration probably was music, man. My dad, my dad was a DJ, you know what I'm saying? And just growing up around it, hearing music or whatever, all day, every day. So that was pretty much my biggest inspiration. Like, I just grew up in a house where I heard everything from Marvin Gaye to Run DMC or whatever, and my Christmas gifts was music, you know what I'm saying? I got keyboards, I got turntables, and other people was getting bikes, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm kind of grateful for you know what my dad saw in me. Now, being from down south, how did that? How you feel like that influenced the change of the south? I mean, did it add a different touch to where you're like? Okay. It did because you know people gave me the name producer. I never really, really even saw myself as a producer. I've always been a DJ. You know what I'm saying? Even the beats that I've done was from a DJ perspective. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of showed me that wow, like outside this box is a whole big world, like, and everybody loves this, this, you know, this thing that you do or whatever. So, I, you know, I look at it like, you know, it can happen for anybody if you put your grind to it. And I grew up in the deck, so it was like, growing up in the cater, it was like you're influenced by old Outkast, Young Blood, had MC Shoddy, you know, yeah. Devil J, you know, Transforms, like all the old school. We had the song the deck. They play it on, on yeah. video for forever. I forget what's they know. <laughs> my, my, my question is like when when I first left there and went to like London and went to Europe and then hit Iceland and stuff, I started picking up on different sounds of music and it started taking that back home. Yeah. What was one of the, your traveling stories where you hit somewhere and you was like, yo, it's a little play over here, but I want to twist it a little bit. What's I think it? everywhere I've been, I've heard something. I've been to Mississippi and probably heard somebody scratching on the washboard. It was like, damn, <laughs> that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta, when you know you hear organized noise, just taking crazy samples and putting them on key, you're like, wow, like that's cool. So I think I've picked up something from pretty much almost everywhere I've been, like culture-wise, listening to people and what they do. So I really can't say it was one particular place. I'm kind of like, I'm a study bug. If I go to your city, I'm going to pay attention to what it is that y'all rocking to and what y'all like and try to incorporate it in my own little thing. Now, I don't know if you're touching this, but a lot of people don't know you. You're a huge influence on just like a whole different set of style of music coming out of New Orleans with, you know, Frida and all that stuff. You don't touch on like how you got into like doing stuff other than just kind of hip-hop music? I mean, Bounce is pretty much I'm not gonna say it's where I started at because I was doing other things before that, but bounce is New Orleans. It's you know, it's our culture. It's gonna, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna take and then you gotta look at it like this. A lot of cats don't know a lot of New Orleans music came from up top. You know, like somebody like Mantronics, for instance. We just imitated Mantronics, you know what I'm saying? Mantronics was pretty much one of the first artists that was doing triplets with hi-hats or whatever, and snare rolls or whatever, but it wasn't really that big in New York, but it was big down south. You know what I'm saying? And we always was like, damn, like this dude is so far ahead of his time till it was crazy or whatever. And we took those elements and just ran with it. You know what I'm saying? With, um, I mean, music's huge down there. You, outside of hip hop, everything is huge. So let me, this is something I want to touch on. I talked, we had Kid Kid in the studio, AVR, talked to him and a few other people to kind of take it on another tilt. Why do you think it's so much racial tension and black and black crime down there? I mean, it's like the South has a different take on stuff, and it's like it's different stories that I have and some of my boys that grew up here in New York being from the The thing of it is, I can answer that real easy. A lot of cats from down South haven't been anywhere. 
haven't seen nothing else. That's what they program to think. That's life. That's what it is. Like this is this is you know it's one dimensional. That's what you think and that's what you do. You know when you step outside, you gotta take you gotta think about Hurricane Katrina when the lights were shined on New Orleans. It was like God damn, like is that a city or a third world country? You know what I'm saying because. We've been just put there so long and you've never been out your neighborhood, you've never stepped nowhere else, you don't even know what another city over, like what's their culture, what they do, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's what you, and, and so many places down south is like that. Like they've never been to New York, never been to LA, never been nowhere to see like, okay, that's not what, what it's really about. And if you keep seeing the same things over and over again, you program to think that, yeah, that's what, that's what you so think. So what, what do you think? What do you think is will, will be a kind of turning point? Then, you know, because I mean, like, it's like I know some. I, I'll, I'll be honest. Like I tell you, like some of my boys I grew up with, definitely smarter than me, but they didn't have the drive to get outside of that that shit. You know what I'm saying? Is what so you're what, saying? What's, what's it's the drive and gotta, you know, sooner or later they gotta walk around. You know, not to go to like with the bombing office and shit. It's like you know, it's like my little nephews. That's all they know. You know what I'm saying? My mom and dad grew up. All they fucking knew was like going through other shit. Exactly. Now. That's you what know? I mean. But it's, 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 it's educating yourself, you know what I'm saying? It's knowing that it's bigger things in the world than where you at. And you gotta have the guts to take that chance, to go out. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you are a product of the project or whatever, and you just think that that's all I'm gonna be, then nine times out of 10, that's all you gonna be. But if you, you know, get it in your mind that, you know what, this is just a stepping stone. I'm gonna start from here, but I got bigger and better things I'm doing in life. So, so in the beginning, here we go, did you, Think you would be right now? Oh yeah, really? I that's, always that's, knew that. I love that. I love to hear that. Homie, I always knew that. That's good. You know that's what good. I'm saying? Nothing. I, I promise you, anybody you could talk to that know me will tell you nothing broke my focus. I promise you, and I'm not making that up. Yeah. It would be like while we was doing our whatever our drug game, da da da, whatever that dude was in his room on his turntables, like you know what I'm saying? Like, he was with his music, and I feel like it's. And another thing is, we need. More leaders, not followers. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you following behind somebody, then shit, you might be going down the wrong path. Like I don't, I don't need to follow nobody. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's too many Indians and not enough chiefs. Now, when when you first started, what was uh, a period when you were like, I don't know what to say, say a song, someone you're working with? What was that period that you remember where you was like, you know what, I got this shit? You know, so did you have that turning point where it was just kind of like you just catapulted to where? You know, you got come you know what's with nuts? It. I mean, the crazy thing is, I had, I remember like the first two records I ever had, like, you know, when I started DJing, when it was chic, good time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And my dad gave them to me, and it came like nothing to me to figure out the motions and how to make it, you know, backspin, how to make a scratch noise or whatever. And right then and there, I was like, this is for me. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I knew right then and there. Like, I was like, damn, like, I, I didn't even have to see nobody do this or none of that. It was pretty much self-explanatory to me, like, okay, shit, this, this is how this works. And you know, back in the G, you had mixers that was damn near this big. Yeah. With a crossfader, you had to run across the world. You know? That's all, all yeah. Yeah. Wow. What What's some words of inspiration you got for people who are... Who are doing music that are trying to, you know, come up and rapping or whatever? What, what, what? Hard work. It takes time and it takes hard work and dedication. You know what I'm saying? You can't start something and stop it. You know. And if you want results, you got to stick with it. Like if you really want results, you got to work hard for it. You know. And everybody, I guess, I would say, I'm not gonna say it's completely this generation, but a lot of this generation want it quick. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, they don't want to work. Little, little, little yeah, little you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't want to work for it. It's like I want to buy a program, and I want the program to rap for me, and I want to be a star. Now, and they're like, it don't, don't work like that. Folks <laughs> don't know. How many years are we looking at, man? Oh man, I'm probably shit. 28. 20, 20, yeah, somewhere around <laughs> that. 25, 28. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I want to definitely congratulations. That's that's major. That's major. Oh, you're someone who, like, I tell a lot of people. When you're growing up, it's like, you know, for me, it's like when I went, I left, I left Atlanta and went to college. And folks were like, why are you going to school? I was like, get the fuck out of Atlanta. Hell yeah. Get away from y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but also, when you do that, you step outside. And you see whole different things you in your environment. And and you yeah, learn. exactly. You really learn. And you and many other people were definitely inspiration, you know, because um, some of those old school Hot Boys videos and everything used to come on, right? I was like, dad, go. You know? <laughs> and it happened, you know what I'm saying? So, and I mean, 
to make it, don't never let nobody tell you something is missing from you because you moved out the hood. In life, you gotta move on. Yeah. You can't stay in the hood, you know what I'm saying? You gotta move on. You know what I'm saying? I still have them elements and I give you know, I give you a perfect example. If you pinch me right now, then I'm gonna act an ass in there. <laughs> but other than that, I'm a cool mellow dude, you know what I'm saying? But in life you really have to move on and do some good things, you know what I'm saying, and see some better things or whatever in life to become a better person or whatever. But a lot of cats are afraid of, like, you know, if I get from around here, it's going to take my edge away. Yeah, and all that. And I'm going to leave. I mean, hey, dude, I don't miss the hood at all. That's all I'm saying. A lot of cats going to lie to y'all, tell y'all keep it hood and all that. I don't miss that shit at all. <laughs> so, you heard me? <laughs> some of your, your biggest traveling places you've been. Want some, give me some touch on that, you know? I'm, dude, just coming from New Orleans. One, one city over could be a big place to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I, I mean, like, I could, I could go to Houston or where, somewhere like that. That's big to me. Atlanta was big to me. Like, Atlanta was one of the places, was, you know, it was an influence on me because I saw a lot of dudes, musicians doing their thing, and people like, you know what, we own this. This is our own thing. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn, like, we don't own nothing. Like, and some cats, you know, like, I'm like, this y'all studio? This y'all, like, just, that's why I say it. Like, it's not really about, I didn't have to go to Germany, I didn't have to go to Japan or none of that. Just one it's city personal. over, one state over to see something like, and I'm like, wow, like, this is a different environment. And just meet cool people. There's nothing wrong with vibing with people. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't talk, just listen. A lot of times in life. How'd you be doing? Oh, he good. I'm in the studio now, with him right now. I'm in the okay, studio. Guys, I'm ready to hear some more juvenile, man. I'm in the studio you know? with him right now. So what time and the crazy wise, thing is, no lying to y'all, I left him to come do this. And when I come, when I go back, that's what I'm going to. Okay. Time wise, what you what we looking at when we hear some more juvenile? I think probably about a month. Within a month. And I, I was I was at, I was asking about an exclusive, so maybe we yeah, yeah. might get Z, Leslie. Yeah, wait, yeah. I mean, did you touch on? We actually step over the dirt. I mean, I was in there. This man here and another good friend of ours, they brought me into the whole thing seven years ago, and essentially it's like you probably touched on what Ball Z was like. We're the we're the main sound of the South. Yes, know? sir. And it's it's a privileged thing to kind of get to where it is now, to where it's like you know. We, we did with you know Runny, we did with Spitty, all these other guys. It's like, and it's all family, it's a family, you know. And it's, and it's like, you know, it's a it's an honor to meet you, and it's also nice to know that we got support up here in New York. You know? Homie, whatever y'all need, you already know. Like, I mean, it's family to me, and I know where it starts from. You know, I know a lot of cats start off as artists. You know, I kind of, I ain't gonna say it was forced in that, but it just became that. I started from a street DJ. I still look at it as I'm a street DJ. You know what I'm saying? I'm still passionate about music. I still love it. And I know the grind starts with with people. You know what I'm saying? You need a team to make you happen. And if you don't understand that, then you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you won't, yeah, yeah, you yeah, won't yeah, be here alone. And I think the whole reason, I mean, you got to look at it. If, if, you know, if I quit today, I had 28 years in this. There's so many cats who can't say that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I still feel good about it. I'm still passionate about it. I still love it. That's what's up. It's a good thing to be here. Manny Fresh, Ballsy, Dirty Gold Bastard, whole crew, man. Thank you. Thank you.